Problem 3.96. In this problem, water flows in a system shown in the figure below. We need to assume a frictionless flow. And with this, we're going to calculate the volume flow rate at which water must enter into the inlet to maintain a 16 feet high at point 1. And we also need to calculate the value of H in feet of water for the static pressure of the tube at point 3. Okay, so let's just start by making a list of the points that we have and the information that we know about each point. So we know we are going to consider four different points. So we have information for point points. Okay. And then we have pressure, velocity, elevation, and then area at each point. So let's just start with pressure at point one. Point one is a, a, a gauge pressure for atmospheric, so it's going to be zero. The same is going to happen at point four. The other two pressures, we do not know. The velocity at point zero, we assume it to be zero because it says that we want to maintain that elevation constant, so that Velocity is equal to zero. Point two, point three, we don't know. And we don't know at point four. Elevation at point Z is equal to 16 feet. And two, three, and four, we assume this is to be zero. The areas for point one, we do not need it since the velocity is zero. Remember, A is used for continuity equation, if we do not have any type of velocity, we cannot apply continuity. So this, we neglect it. And then we have two variable areas, a point two and a point three. It tells us that the area is point two, feet is square. And then the same thing as point three. Then at point four, we have point one, feet is square. Okay, so now we have the information. So what we're looking for is the value of Q, right? The value of Q that enters over here basically is equal to the volume flow rate at any of the points. So it could be either V2, A2, or V3, A3, or V4, A4. And the reason we don't include one, once again, this is not moving. And we simply said that this is a steady case so that it maintains the same so that the elevation remains constant. Okay, so now we need to determine what quantities we get, what relationships we get. Okay, so notice that for point two and for point three, we have two unknowns in each. However, for point four, we only have one unknown. And we have all the given values in point one. So we're going to start with Bernoulli's equation between one and four. So Bernoulli is between one and four. And that's how you select which one has the least amount of unknowns. So we do V1 plus 1 half rho V1 square plus gamma C1 is equal to P2 plus 1 half rho V2 square plus gamma C2. Okay, and let's cancel things out. The velocity and the pressure at point 1 is equal to 0. And then we also know that the elevations are point 0.4 equal to zero and also the pressure at point four and I mislabeled this it should have been four four at every point okay so what are we left with is that gamma z1 is equal to one half rho v4 square and we simply find the value of v4 so we simply solve for gamma so gamma is equal to density G, the value of Z1, 1 half rho V4 square, density and density cancel out, V4 is equal to a square root of 2 G Z1, and this, this gives us 32.1 feet per second. So that's the velocity at point 4. Using that information, we could find the value flow rate, volume flow rate, since we have the value of the area. So Q is equal to V4A4, which is 
32.1 feet per second, and the area was given as 0.1 feet squared. So that tells us that the volume flow rate is equal to 3.21 feet cubed per second. And that, as I said before, is the volume flow rate at any of the points, including coming into the system. So now what we need to find out is the elevation h. Elevation h, notice that it comes from a manometer. For us to be able to get that elevation, first we need to get the value of the pressure at that point. Okay? So there are a couple of ways that we need to do it. So for us to get the pressure at point 3, we also need the velocity at point 3 because it's unknown. Since we have the, already the volume flow rate, we could find out what is the value of the velocity at point 3 using the volume flow rate. So we have that Q is also V3 A3. Therefore, V3 is simply the value of the volume flow rate, 3.21 feet cube per second, divided by the area at that point, 0.4 feet square. That tells us that the value of the velocity at that point is equal to 8.025 feet per second. Now that we have the velocity, we could relate 0.1 and 0.3 to find the pressure at that point. So we're going to apply Bernoulli's between 0.1 and 0.3. So we write P1 plus 1 half rho V1 squared plus gamma Z1 is equal to P3 plus 1 half rho V3 squared plus gamma Z3. We cancel out, again, the values of P1 and V1, since they are equal to 0. We also cancel out the position of Z3, because it's equal to 0. And then we write the equation for P3. We see that P3 is equal plus 1 half rho V3 squared is equal to gamma Z1. Right? Therefore, P3 is equal to gamma Z1 minus 1 half rho V3 squared. We substitute the values and we find that the value of P3 is equal to 990.61 pounds per feet squared. So now that we have the value of the pressure, we simply use hydrostatic pressure to find the value of H. We know that P3 is equal to P at the top plus gamma H. And since this, this is gauge, this value becomes zero. Therefore, the value of P3 is simply equal to gamma H. And then we substitute. So H is simply P3, which is 990.61 pounds per feet square and we divide by the gamma of a of water which is 62.4 pounds per feet cubed and we found that this elevation is equal to 15.87 feet.